On the splendid banks of River Zuari lies Pilar, once a major port and the capital of ancient Goa. Today, it is graced by the Indian Mission Seminary built by the Portuguese in their colonial years as a center of its missionary activities in Goa. It is here Reverend Father Cosme Costa resides a notable international scholar, historian, archaeologist and writer. He has done extensive research on the apostolic origins of the Christianity in India, especially in Goa and the West Coast. His work is evident in the museum built by him, which houses collection of ancient civilization and dynasties of Goa. The evidence of trade between Goa and the West. The coming of the Portuguese and the Roman Catholic missionary activities and most important of all the evidence of the pre-Portuguese Christianity. The prime discovery is of the St. Thomas Cross found in 2002. We shall now listen to Father Cosme Costa. This cross belongs to the St. Thomas Christian or better still the Pallavi Cross. And this Pallavi is, first of all, let us say, we have given here some of the data, sort. Okay, Christianity was in Goa from 52 AD. Because St. Thomas, when he came to Kerala, he passed through Goa. There was this port of call for, come here, come here. There was this port of call for ship from Rome, Greece, Arab countries, Ceylon, Cambodia, China. So this, this port was frequented by ship from Rome, Greece, from the first century till 1380 AD. So, as there was trade from 30 BC between Rome and India, this ships were coming this side. There were, there were two routes. One was from the Arabian, uh, from, from Arabia to Karachi, uh, then Bombay, and then Goa, and then Kerala, like that. There was another route that was that Hippalus route, but that Hippalus route was only at, a, at certain times of the year, not every way. So it seems that St. Thomas must have come this side. And there is a document in Portugal saying that St. Thomas had landed in Goa and baptized two people. And then he found that Bartolomeo had come. And so he left this and went to Kerala. And spread the church in Kerala, seven places. Then he went to Mayalapur and then died a martyr day, whatever, wherever it is. So now, <coughs> This port was sinking, from 1380 started sinking. So they transferred the capital from there to all the Muslims, they built all Goa as the capital. And the Portuguese conquered from the Muslims. And finally, the Portuguese shifted the capital from, from this, from uh, all Goa to Panzim because of the plague. Okay, so these are the three capitals of Goa. This is the first capital. Second capital is the is Old Goa, and third capital is Panjim, present. Of. This is how this time came to India. Now, we have got here also the Roman amphora of the first century and Roman coins of Constantine the Great and 
da Eclesia, né? da Eclesia não contesta. So you see, these things confirm the context of Rome with Goa. Now these things are found here. See, there was a tank, there is a tank this side, which we have removed about 18 feet of debris. We have gone right inside the tank this much. And we have removed the whole thing and all these things are found in the tank. Among them we found three coins of Rome. Which means that they were trade contacts. And you see the trade contacts are confirmed because in uh, inscriptions of the Kadambas ruled from the first from the tenth century, there are inscriptions saying that Goa had trade contacts even with with uh, Arabia and uh, Zanzibar, Africa, Kuwait, Pakistan, that is Kuwaita, Gujarat, and other places, and Kerala, and all these places. So all this, all this finds confirm what is written in the inscriptions of the Kadamba. Now coming to this cross. The St. Thomas went, as I said, from Goa, he went to Kerala. He might not have been for a long time in Goa, but he went to Kerala, and from Kerala, he went to Malapur and worked there from 52 to 72 AD and died a matter day. Now, Similar crosses are found in Mayalapur, Kotayam, there are two, Sanganathiri, Alangad, Karamatam in India, then in, in, in also in Taxila and, in, and elsewhere. Also in Amnurabhapura in Sri Lanka. I've got all the names here, Karamatam, Mutisira. Alangat, Katunelu, Tanganesiri, Kotayam, all this. Plus also there remain Mayrapur and this is the Mayrapur cross. First one. Voilà. Now, this cross. Okay, now after the fall of the Roman Empire, in 476 AD, the Sassanid dynasty of Persia took over the trade that was going on of the Roman Empire. They blocked the coming of the Romans, the, the, the Eastern Empire, they blocked it by conquering Arabia. And then they, they, the ships started coming, they built, they built some some um, this ports and all that. And the ships started frequenting the, all these places. Among the, among the, the Sassanids were generally, they were Persians, Parsi. But among them, there were Christian traders also. And these Christian traders put up these crosses wherever there were Christian settlements. That's how you find all these crosses. Plus also, you find, suddenly we found this cross here. Now, this Sassanid, the, this is now Pahlavi script, which was in work between 272, uh, 276 to 681 AD. It has been deciphered now in, by two ways, and we will see that afterwards. Then the Portuguese, when they came, they came across this cross. And all these, you know, we were all, all Christians together, especially in Kerala and all that. But because of the Portuguese intervention, there are so many divisions in the church today. Well, they thought that their brand of Christianity was the correct one. And naturally, you see, they abused their powers. And as they had the power, they did everything they could. They tried to impose the Roman right 
upon the Syrian Christians. Now, in Goa, perhaps they, it is said that there is a document somewhere. So that the, uh, in by 1559, 1560, they introduced the Inquisition. But before that, they, they told uh, the Christians that they could only belong to the Roman right. They had also become Christian Romans, or they had to leave from here. Some of the Christians are said to have left to Kalyanpur, and they're still there with the with the this with their uh, celebration rites and all that. And then afterwards, you know, Bara Brahma war and all that afterwards that thing came now. Anyway. But before that they were they they are they are Hindu, they were also Hindus in Goa. And he threw Maskar and so I have quoted in my book. He says that uh, this uh, this father says that uh, there are the the Christian mm, or who are reverted to Hinduism, but they had they were a sect like that was known as Tomse. Tomse means Thomases. But they had Christian customs among them. But they were following the Hindu right because there were no priests here to, to, to look after them. Anyway, the Portuguese found this cross. When they found it, we have to decipher that. What they have done, they have removed this cross from the mound on which it was. And they have confirmed that this is the cross of St. Thomas. Are they Saint Tome? These words say that this is a something, this is a half word, maybe stone, Pedra de Saint Tome, something like that. And then there is Dori Lazus, which we don't know. And they have betrayed themselves by putting the date, 642. The Portuguese were not fools to make half a script and half a cross. So they have made this inscription when the cross was intact. And the, the inscription was full. And they have made it in 642. 642 means what? The one will be here. So in 1642 they have found this cross. And they have made this Portuguese inscription. 1653 was the Kunam Kuri Sot, when the Portuguese were driven out of Kerala, of Cochin and they lost their possession there. At that time, they clashed, and they left the Catholic Church also. And then the Pope sent them Car Carmelite missionaries and got them back. And many of them, there are cardinals and bishops among them today, they are Catholics, but they belong to the Syrian rites, Syro Malabara, Syro Malankara. Anyway, so the Portuguese, in 1653, when they were driven out of Kerala, they broke this cross and they put it inside the mound on which it was. The mound is not here, the mound is on it. Give me that book. So they broke it and kept, put it inside the mound. And on that mound, they mounted this big Latin cross. They mounted this big Latin cross on that. Fifteen years ago now, in, around 1998, there was a storm in this place, like a tsunami or something like that. And the whole mound was taken. And this cross that was there broke into five pieces and fell down. And this cross that was inside the mound came out. In 2001, on 27th of April, uh, we had gone there for that, for a stroll or something. And we found this cross. And we contacted the people, the Daza, and that is the people who are in charge of that. And they told me, you can take it if you want. So we brought it. 
And on the same day, there was an international seminar in Panjim. And people from Germany, England, America, and especially Belgium, and all, they were all assembled there to discuss or study about the trade conducts of Goa with the Europe from 1600 to 1800 something. At that time, the people who were organizing this seminar, they combined with me that they would bring the, the people here for this, for this, to see this museum, because this is the Kadamba Museum, and things that are here you could don't find anywhere else. I said, okay. Coincidentally, without any planning or anything, all God work, God work, Holy Spirit working, so to say. We brought this, this on the same day on which that seminar was there because they were taking, they were coming here. But I didn't bring that because they were coming here. It happened, it happened like this. You see, one of our priests, we had gone, two of us had gone there. One of them hit his leg or hit his foot for this. And he said, there is a cross there. I said, what man, broken crosses? Why do you want me to bring all the broken crosses and keep them in the museum? Why do we need that? So I despised this, actually. I didn't even see it properly. And I brought this thought. I don't know whether there is something there also. If you want, you can see that. There seems to be some, some, uh, some Pallavi script in there also. I don't know. If you know, if you know to read, see. This, this type of words, for example, this type of words seem to be there. So I don't know exactly what it can be. So I brought this stone and I started cleaning it. You know, when you came here, this man who is the, how the receptionist welcomed you. So, what happened when I brought this crowd, this stone? I started <laughs> cleaning it. And he started testing me all the time, coming again and again and again, asking me. There was nothing else, only this stone. I said, there are many things, man, you want me to bring all those broken pieces and put them in the middle? Why, what is it? But uh, perhaps the Holy Spirit was inspiring him, I don't know. For three days he was passed. No, he, was, he, he started again. Nothing else was there, only this stone. And then I casually said, so there was a stone with a cross like, and some dove or something, I don't know what, I have not seen it properly. I said, why did you bring it? And for three days and three nights, he pestered me, telling me to, get the, to go and get the cross. I could not get a vehicle. Anyhow, I arranged somebody. So we went there, and when I saw it properly, then I said, Are, this is St. Thomas Cross. How can it be here? And as I lifted up, the word came to my, to my heart, in my heart of hearts. The stone that the builders rejected has become the corner stone. And that is what it is. So I brought it, I cleaned it. And the same day, the international seminar, when they came here, they started asking, where you got this cross? Where you got this cross? I told them, I guess I am about two kilometers from here. One of the building car who is the, who is the, who was the head of that time, was the head of the uh, Xavier Institute in Bombay. Required the Saint Xavier's College. He said, "This is an Agassiz. Then sure the Christianity was in Goa before the coming of the Portuguese." And the others also started. And one gent from gent University, Belgium, and another one from Japan. They said, "This is an old description. Sixth century, seventh century, sixth century." They said, "They put it seven, but they say it is sixth century." Even fifth century, I don't know. Or whatever it is, it is similar to Mayalapur. So then, 
father Pius Malik and Natil was here. And he started, he sent photographs of this all over. And Father Joseph Vaju Thanapiri, Joseph Vaju calls himself, he was uh, giving a lecture on St. Thomas Crosses in Germany or somewhere. And somebody him, saw him, showed him the picture of this cross. Goa. Goa is not on the line of St. Francis or St. Thomas. But you know, we have they found this cross and saw it. He flew from Rome to here just to read it. And he deciphered the whole thing. And he gave the same thing that was given by one of those, or those, this sort of call that. This the interpretation of this. My Lord, he says, this is here, my Lord Christ have mercy. Then the rest of it is not the son of the Syrian who has engraved this, this, this side. So anyway, but now there is a better interpretation than this. I don't know whether you have heard about it. Very good interpretation. And it is based on, I'll give you a copy of it. It is based on the, on the, this, on Indian Asoka spillers and all the Asoka's uh, Edicts and all that, we saw that there are some words there which are really Indian. These among these, especially these words here. It says that this is, there's given a new interpretation. I've given, I've got that, but I have not copied it yet here. Anyway, that is how now this cross and uh, we got on. Then I wrote this book about it. It became very famous. It became very famous. This is the cross. I put a small photograph of that big one, although that is bigger than this. See? This is the river front. Water friend. And it was here that I found this cross. This is also the, the mound. This is the mound. See, this is another photograph of the mound. Then Father Vajutan, the people were not going here because it was, it was snake infested. They were afraid. One lady told me that when she was five years old, the, the, uh, her pig had littered there. And she went to, to help or whatever it is. <laughs> and they found the cobra, big cobra came. And she ran away and the whole thing was spread everywhere that there is a cobra there, nobody should go there. And from that time onward, she must be at least the, She's 50, 60 years old, and it was five years old. For the last 55 years, nobody had gone there. And this had become a ticket, as you see here. It had become a ticket. And then when I got the cross and I went there, I called her, she would not come. And finally, okay, she told me all the story. Then Father Vajat was done up police, she got the whole thing cleaned, cleared. And now presently this is the situation and they are superstitious a little so they have left this as it is. They have not removed. But they have what they have done is they have extended this place. They have built a big a big uh, this thing around it. Big, uh, I mean they have reclaimed the land a little more and built a wall in that. And then the, this, uh, this is so big now. now. They have built up to this much. They have, the floor has been, has been mm, this. So if you go there today, you will find only this a small piece like this. You know, the whole thing has, they have. I don't know whether they wanted to save it. I don't think they wanted to save it, they wanted to destroy it, but then the superstitious thing, something has remained, I have a mind, and so they have not.
trust it. So this was immediately after the father Pius Pala Kamalikanda wrote a, a, an article on Panorama that was uh, Gunnahun Times and it described the whole thing. What I told you now is all described on this paper. And on here also I've referred to that. In this book I've given uh, here I've given the Mailapur Cross also. And then compared it afterwards with the with this cross. Okay, my life will cross and I'll cross. Made the comparison about it. You can see the same words here. Here, for example. Here also. The same words are there. It's not the son of the Syrian who was king, that's not the, it is the Christ the Lord who has shed his blood for the salvation of humanity. That is what is present is present interpretation of that. The first thing was based on Syriac. And when we found these things in India, Asokas then that one, Himraj, Himraj is Jesuit, based in Bangalore has written two articles, about 30 pages, more than 30 pages, on one magazine that come from the, from the, from the, this, from the, from Pune, Vidyapit. They have written two articles on that, and he has explained with photographs and everything, how he is interpreting that. I will show you the articles. The, the, the greatest uh, Christian writer's first historian, Saint Jerome and Saint uh, and Joseph of Caesarea. Joseph of Caesarea is the first historian writer who collected the documents of all the apostles and wrote the history of the church. And Saint Jerome continued that till 400 or something. So these two have given the testimony that there was a, a Saint Pantanos who was sent from Alexandria to India. Saint Pantanos was the first the one who established the famous catechetical school of Alexandria, where origins, climate of Alexandria, and all this big, great uh, Basil and all this had started there. The first uh, group of uh, highly educated Christians were started there, because there, there was a library of about half a million books, it seems at that time, in Alexandria. And therefore, now the Pantanos, and what happened is, Joseph says that he came to India at the request of the legates of, of India. That means, the uh, Saint Bartholomew came here. and converted them. Afterwards, they had a problem defining their religion before the Brahmins and the Yogis. Brahmins and Yogis could not be anywhere else except India. So Pantanus came here, he defended their faith, baptized about 10,000, Hindus and all that. And finally, when he was going back, they, they also told him a gospel according to Saint Matthew, which was among with them. Now, 
gospel as a matter of not the present gospel, but it was the talosia, or to call that, it was the, the saying of Jesus in Aramaic. And he had left that there, not a copy of that. Uh, it was surprising that the Aramaic gospel was left in India. Why? This was the big problem. Therefore, scholars would not accept that Bartholomew came. But five later, it's a discovery, and today, especially, it's very clear. Even in our blood, there seems to be Jewish blood. God knows. Brahmins seem to have that. God knows anyway. So they, they found that there was a Jewish calling in Goa, Kalyanpur, Kalyan, Kerala, everywhere. They came from different, different periods. And what happened is that in the seventh century, this is what I've written there also, in the seventh century what happened was that there was a, a seventh century in Chanatarib and Salman Asher and all these people, they had removed the Jews, the, the ten tribes of Israel, Israel as such. They have removed it and they have taken them into exile and dispersed them all over, all over the Persian Empire, which extended from India to Germany. Now, when they dispersed them, there was a group of these Jews who were very high, severely persecuted or whatever it is, they were subjected to very, very hard work in the galleys and all that. So they caught a ship and they embarked into the Arabian Sea. Maybe we are somewhere around that too. And then they came to up to go. They came to in this chiplum, or oh, not chiplum, this Sindhudurg, no? In Sindhudurg, there is that place. There is a island there. What about this? They were shipwrecked there. And many of them swam a sore. And a group came to Goa, a group went to, went to Kalyan, a group went to Bombay, a group went to Kalyanpur up to Papak. And that's how, from the 7th century BC, there was a the Jewish settlement in, in India. Not only when the apostles came, Jesus had told them, go first to the lost tribe of Israel. And if they don't accept, then you go to the Gentiles. And that is what they did. And that's how Bartholomew might have landed in Kalyan, where there was a Jewish colony. He might have landed in Goa also, because there was a Jewish colony. And up to Kalyanpur also, there was a Jewish colony. Oh, this is how. And then when he, Pantanus went back, he took the book also. If that book had remained here, it would have been a great treasure. But it is lost. Nobody bothered about it. There is one chapel, if you want to, you can go and see it. There is a chapel, there are two chapels, two, three chapels in Goa. All of them have the sanctum sanctorum circular round and then a chapel is added to that. That's the little edition. You can see the statue what is strong. Seems to be the Jewish synagogue. To which afterwards the Portuguese have added the chapel. This structure is in Siridao here. Siridao is just about five kilometers from. Then there is one more chapel in Divar Island. Same thing, the structure is around and the chapel is added. There is another one on Surao Island, which later on was made a seminary, but the chapel is around. 
For they say that these three tapes before three places they must have been Jewish settlements. Therefore, the that is that uh, I'm not really following the advice of Christ to go to the Jews first. It wasn't here. And these are settlements from 7 BC. Not your settlements. Your people have come only when the Romans started attacking uh, the Christian uh, Jews. They fled to, one of them fled to Cochin, Cochin Sinago. Cochin Sinago is only 2000 years old. Whereas this is 7th century BC. So much so you might have heard about Tipu Sultan. Have you heard about Tipu Sultan? The one man, when he ordered the Christian to be persecuted, one man said he was a Jew. And Tipu Sultan stopped the whole thing. I think, how are you a Jew? And he was told that, uh, that he believed that circumcision and all that, everything. So the, uh, the Tipu Sultan ordered him to be freed. He's our brother. Jews and Muslims are brothers or something like that. And he did not persecute him. But the others were Christians were all around the So this is how we have got this proof. Very, very strong proof because this uh, Pantanus and you know, this Bartholomew is of the Caesarea and, and then uh, <coughs> Jerome, their the authorities are in the church. Secondly, even St. Clemens of Alexandria, when Pantanus came, this side was sent by the Bishop of Alexandria. Uh, he was the founder of the catechetical school in Alexandria. In one era, 180 AD, he left the uh, catechetical school and came down to India, to Kalyan. Uh, the India Felix, it's called India Felix, and that is India Felix, the translation of the word India the Happy. And the Sanskrit word for that would be Kalyan. Who so they say that he landed in Kalyan. And uh, down also it's Kalyanpur. Both are Kalyan. So he, but he could not have landed in Kalyan, Kalyan first. If he had landed, this is my supposition, if he had landed in Kalyan first, then he was martyred in Kalyan. That could not have happened. He must have landed in Kalyanpur and gone up to Kalyan, passing through all this Goa and all that. And in all these places, we have got another evidence of that, you know. Only Christians in these places, they celebrate for any feast or anything. They have got what we call the Sanna. You know what is Sanna? This is called Sanna. Now, this is a preparation made out of a rice and coconut toddy. And only Christians have this on the occasion of feasts and all that. Nobody else. Hindus make idli. They don't put the, they don't put the, what? Coconut, toddy they don't put, sur, sur, sur they don't put, sura, they don't put, they, they sell it, they uh, make it leave it, some other corn, whatever, but only Christians from Mangalore up to Kalyanpur, Christians have this on, on feast days and all they have this preparation. So what is the meaning of this? Now this one, as I told you, this Mr. Father Esu Mascaren has was written a lot about this in the in the in the this examiner and new leader and all that. He says that at that time in Goa, wheat would not be available. 
and buying an out of grapes would not be available. Oh, I would have seen Bartholomew, or the Christian priest who came from Syria, from the Sassanid dynasty, from the Sassanid, whoever they were, they allowed them this preparation as the Eucharist. So instead of the of wheat, they put rice, and instead of the wine, they put toddy, coconut toddy, and that is how. And the word is sanna, S-A-N-N-A, in Konkani. But that, they say, corresponds to sadhana, union with God. Eucharist is union with God. With these evidences, as you say, as you want. Then there are others also. Um, Father is so much current, I've written a lot on this, and I've quoted them extensively on this book. This is an article by Esau Mascaran, a paragraph of that. He consistently maintained that the pre Portuguese Christian of the Goans was caused in oriental forms, significantly symbolized by the image-less crosses with equal ends like the crosses standing in our day in some secluded parts of Barthes I have not found anything up to now. Such that and more numerously in those parts of Gomantak known as Nova's conquest, new conquest. Fifteen centuries before Alpukerk lay stepped the sword, the clergy of the Syrian Rite sustained apostolic Christianity in India. In the same way as the St. Thomas Christianity from Sokotra to South India. Konkan writers, this is important, Konkan writers, Konkani writers like D.F. Dantas in, a, in his Gomanta Kata, written in 1897, has recorded the local tradition about this. Clergy. Dante affirmed that in 1559, that is one year before the Inquisition began, the earlier Christian doctrine and practice were forbidden by papal decree and that the Oriental Christians of Gomantak were absorbed into the Latin rite, now predominant in the Konkan. Now, papal decree is not there. There's no papal decree, but what the Portuguese had been given is the right to baptize, civilize, Christianize all people and learn from the Urkongwa. With that, they also interfere with the Syrian right, no doubt. And the same could have been here also. It's not a papal decree, but it is something that, that I have refuted there. I said, such a papal decree alluded to above has not been found so far by the author. However, the Portuguese authorities may have interpreted in 1559 the general permission to subject to the jurisdiction all the land people discovered to be discovered by them, given by Pope Leo the 10th on 7, 6, 15, 14 by the pool, the infidel Constantine to absorb the Oriental Christians in Goa into the Latin Rite. The St. Francis Xavier landed in Goa on 6th May, 1542. And he was in Goa for six months, of, not six months, four and five months. He left Goa on the, on the 20th of September, 1542. So from 6th May 1542, uh, maybe 20th May of 1542, 20th September, or some will be four and a half months. 
before going from here, he sent a letter to Ignatius. And in that letter, I refer to that, in that letter he says that uh, it's a beautiful city to see, but you can carry so many Christians in Goa. And he said they are great devotees of St. Thomas. And then they celebrate the, this feast and all that, St. Thomas. And therefore he, the, he, tell, he tells Ignatius to ask the Pope to give them a plenary indulgence on the feast and during the novenas. Whoever would attend the Mass and receive communion, may confess in order. Confess in communion. Or not only on the, on the day of the feast, but also during the octave or something. So, so my parents want to say, who were these Christians? Devotees of St. Thomas means, Portuguese did not spread the devotion of St. Thomas at that time. They were natural devotees of St. Thomas, because they were St. Thomas Christian. They might have accepted, as I told you afterwards, they might have accepted the, the denomination, Catholic, the Roman Catholic denomination, Portuguese, when they made laws, people from Goa fled away to Kalyanpur. Mangalore. For example, it is said that from my village, my village is the patron of St. Thomas. Patron of St. Thomas. Aldora. Now, they say that St. Thomas had for this say so much kindness. He seems to say that he has worked in Galdona also for some time. Whatever it is. So now, there were Christians when the Portuguese came, perhaps. Or there were, they were when the Portuguese came, they, they got themselves baptized. And baptized them, they were received in the church. But they kept their names, Hindu names, Prabhu, Pai, these names. They also kept the Sindhi and they dressed the Purve. Portuguese wanted them to remove this and they wanted them to give up the Purve also. And dress like this. Shirt and pant. And they found no, no, they found that these were our traditions, our custom. Why, what does we have been Christians here? Why should we adopt foreign distance? So they registered. It seems that the Portuguese took one of them and burnt him at a stake in Old Goa as a heretic. So a group of people whose relatives are not from my village, they ran away in Patmaris. Patmaris were those ships that they had. They, they were called the Dung, Daos, Daos, Arab Daos, something like that. They ran away to Kalyanpur and to uh, Mangalore, Pezar in Mangalore. Now what happened is that uh, there was a there was a there is a priest in this society from Mangalore. So this, this fellow told me that his grandfather told him that they were from Goa, Aldona. And the Portuguese had cut off the Sindhi and forced them to ran away, ran away, and therefore they had come and settled in Kalyan, 